tonight on KSL Outdoors. <laughs> That's the buck. A young man who made an ethical choice last year gets another shot this year. I got him. Chuck, I'm so proud of you. Come along as we reintroduce you to Chuck. I'm Adam Eagle, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Well, fall is in the air, the hunts are upon us, and we've got a pretty cool story for you tonight. Hey, I'm Adam Eagle with KSL Outdoors, and welcome to Southern Utah. Tonight, we're going to introduce you to a young man named Charlie. Charlie was out with us a few years ago on a cow elk hunt. Now, he wasn't successful on that hunt for all the right reasons. We'll explain why later on in the show. And we're going to introduce you to the men who are going to help Charlie hopefully bag a buck with a bow. I'm excited. I am too. I'll bet. I'll bet you've been having a hard time sleeping last night. Yeah, I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's 19, almost 20, and he has cerebral palsy and uh, mild autism. And when he was born, they told us don't expect walking, talking, or anything. He has a spastic diplegia, which is, uh, affects his lower limbs. Walking is very difficult. He's had many surgeries, 40 plus in his life. And he's learned to do all this, and his dad has taught him how to do all this hunting, and it's amazing. We first met Charlie last night. They came in from right here on an elk hunt in northeastern Utah. Wow, hundreds of elk coming in. He could see the elk, but he couldn't tell if they were legal. Yeah, they it came in just, late. They came in late. They came in right where we wanted them. Yeah, but they just came in a little late. Yeah, Charlie, he made the right call. He says, I. I can't ethically take the shot. I can't tell if it's a legal elk. And so uh, that's why we're here. I thought he needs another shot because of that. The ethics will get you something. Pound it. So as I got to know Charlie last year and finding out his limitations, and obviously the, the biggest limitation uh, was his sight. I found out his eyesight's pretty good out to 20, 25 yards. And so I was thinking, okay, can you shoot a crossbow? You get a shooting stick, and so his dad said that they'll try it, and they said they could, and so I had him put in for this unit. We're gonna get everything in here and drive over there. Mandy called and said, we drew all excited. And, and I said, okay, work will start. I'll go uh, start setting blinds up and trail cameras. And I got you a face mask. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> How do you work with him? Gabe has permission to hunt this farmer's field, but has decided to put a couple of blinds on a trail leading to the field. It looks like his scouting may have paid off. Nice buck. I think it's a two by three. Tall, tall two by three. He's a, a blessing, actually. It changed my life for sure when I met his mom. In, instantly smitten with both of them. So. Sean came into Charlie's life when Charlie was just 13. He's taken Charlie under his wing and has given him an outdoors education. Sean has filled that education with love and given Charlie a deep determination. We try to include Charlie as, as much as we can, get him into places that <laughs> sometimes seem impossible, but we pull it off. We had him behind a snowmobile once doing about 50 miles an hour across starvation. He enjoyed yep. that. You gotta make sure that this does not hit either of that or that. His whole life, he's never thought he could do something a regular man could do. And to watch him do this, not only with the cow elk, with this deer, um, just to do the things that other men can do, it makes him feel more like a man and not just a disabled person who makes him feel like he's normal. I can't make any noise. Make any noise because it's going to go right here. We've been in the blinds maybe 20 minutes and we've already got our first visitor. It's a doe. He did a very good job on being quiet and 
and, and not moving around, fidgeting too, too, too much. And while Charlie was doing great keeping quiet in his blind, over in our blind, <coughs> we were maybe a little anxious. More on that and the rest of Charlie's hunt coming up. But first, let's check out this week's climate quiz question. Charlie has a special permit that allows him to use a crossbow for his hunt. Otherwise, crossbows are not allowed on archery hunts. There is also other archery equipment requirements to hunt in Utah. Our climate quiz question is, what is the minimum pull in pounds of a bow at draw or peak for those hunting with archery equipment? And while you're at it, how many blades must your broadhead have and how big of a diameter must your broadheads cut? Now, once you know these requirements, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answers, and while you're at it, give us a like. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner is set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. And our answer to last week's question, which was, can you name the three races Snow Basin hosted for both men and women during the 2002 Olympics? The races were the Downhill, Super G, and Combined Races. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. We'll be right back on Charlie's Hunt. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, Intermountain Wind and Solar, The Cabins at Bear River Lodge, Tracks Power Sports Rentals, and Camp Chef. drive down was beautiful yeah. to meet yeah. up with everybody and have this this type of sportsman it, it, it truly just shows what sportsmen are all about welcome back to charlie's hunt well we've been in the blind for just about an hour and so far we have this doe and a few turkeys milling about amazing watching the wildlife come in and, and hang out and something you don't see every day it's a great experience for all of us i believe we got in the blinds, zipped them up, and we're sitting there, and it couldn't have been 20 minutes, and this, this big old doe comes out and, and presents herself for probably 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, just nibbling around, uh, hanging out. You know, the wind started blowing a little too hard, and I think she had enough, and so she walked off. 20 minutes later, another doe shows up, and the turkeys show up and put on a display, and we're sitting there, and. Silence, got to be quiet, and we're all putting scent spray on, and we're in blinds, and, and uh, everything's set up, put so much into this to have the wind at our backs, yeah. and then all of a sudden we hear uh... I'm going home, I'm going to the <laughs> Gunpowder and lead, I just as loud as can be, and I'm pretty deaf, I mean it's it's like, what the, what the teenagers showing up? What's going on? Is there a party I didn't know about? I thought it was over with from yeah. there on out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw th I saw three heads just hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> we were all in there going into, we hope that's equals phone. She's never going to live that one down, is no, she? No, she's not. <laughs> she's never bringing her cell phone hunting again either. <laughs> And that deer just went on point and, and stared us down for probably 10 straight minutes. She's probably never heard that song before. And <laughs> apparently she liked it. She stuck around, so she never left. Hey, again, it, it just shows that stick with it. You never know what's going to happen. Some of my favorite, most successful hunts have been when something doesn't go according to plan. The alarm clock doesn't go off or you have vehicle problems and then all of a sudden it's just, <laughs> you got this trophy of a memory and it just works out. About a half hour after Miranda's short concert, this buck walks right out on the exact trail Gabe said they would. He looks at me, he's like, my heart's beating so hard. And I'm like, not as hard as mine. <laughs> and Charlie just calms the cucumber. Was he? He was. Yep. I was shaking more than he was. <laughs> Yeah, he was facing right towards us for a minute. And we had to wait. He turned in finally and presented a perfect broadside shot. And Take your time and breathe. It's now or never. Find out if Charlie takes a shot after the break. But first, let's check in with Mickey Anderson and his PMD fishing report. 
PMD. Let's see, that's perfectly Mickey's. Ah, I got nothing except this week's fishing report. Hi, I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's PMD fishing report. Now, PMD is a small mayfly. It's hatching throughout the West, and they're going to range in colors from a cream to light olive and even into a shade of pink. Here's a few flies that might help you fish that hatch. The nymph can vary in colors also. They're gonna be anything from a, a rusty brown into almost black. And as an emerger, just as they get ready, their back starts to crack open and a little yellow starts to show. A fly like this can work really well. Once they get going, my favorite stage are the cripples. They're really slow hatchers and a lot of them drown. So I'm gonna fish something just under the film like this or put something right in the film and just barely dress the, the top part of it so it just barely sticks out. When they are on the full adults, make sure you're matching the color really close. Again, most of them are gonna be kind of a cream color, but have a few pink ones with you as well. A stage that's forgotten in their life is the spent mayfly. This usually happens in the evening. Have a few spinners like this to finish out your collection. Hey, for these PMD tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech, we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors as we try and help Charlie get his first buck. We're all in there shaking. <laughs> I look at him when the deer comes in, he's about ready to shoot. And I'm like, dude, my heart's going crazy. He's like, I know. Look at him, Charlie. Charlie's just like on it. I'm like, if you want, you can shoot this if he wants to. Because we're all trying to be big guys before yeah, us. Yeah. We'll wait, we'll wait, for, for, wait for the four pointer, three something. And then he, you hear Charlie, I want this deer. Oh my gosh, it happened! Oh, 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 oh. Man. First shot. He ain't a two point either. Dude, that was a good shot. Perfect shot. It's all for life. It's all for him. Oh, I'm so proud of him. Should be. That was awesome. Oh my God. Perfect shot. I got him. Chuck, I'm so proud of you. I can't even tell you right now. I was wondering once that phone went off. <laughs> Sorry, it was me. <laughs> We're all like that, so Adam's ringtone. No! <laughs> Apparently that turkey doesn't like Miranda Lambert. <laughs> it was on silent, it was on airplane mode, everything, and that alarm still went off. Let's get him out of the blind. This is the fifth hunt we've done with Gabe, and it always amazes me that he takes the time to find the landowners, the tags, and puts forth so much effort for these hunts. He's the first to say it's not just him that makes this happen. Ooh, you did it. You are so freaking happy right now. <laughs> it's the landowner who allowed Charlie the chance to hunt this land and didn't want recognition to the guys at King's who wanted to outfit the family. The old notion is true, it does take a village. It makes me feel complete. It makes me feel like a better person, but also a better game warden. First, I need to see that license. Your hug starts on August 19th. What's today? It's the 15th. It is... Ooh. 15th? Would you do that? Why are we here right now then? Four days early. That's what we call... Oh, that's right. That's what we call illegal. Well... You might want to show him that one. Well, not according oh. to this. There's another one. <laughs> yeah. Just when you think you have a good case. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Woo! Woo nice job, buddy. He's amazing. Tremendous overachiever. Well, he didn't go far. If you know a landowner, or you own some land where some animals are coming in that could be accessible to, to someone special, get with us. Uh, we'll facilitate it. We'll find a hunter. We'll, we'll find equipment. And I promise you, you won't regret it. Yes. Nicely done, son. That was fun. Thanks for letting us come along. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And 
thank you for having me oh, it was awesome. on your show. I appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure. My pleasure, kid. You're an awesome kid. I, I think you've uh, you've inspired, I'd imagine, hundreds of other people to maybe didn't think they could do this. That yeah, they can do it, right? They can do it. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Hey, more here coming up. Chuck's got a deer to clean. <laughs> but first, let's head down a different trail in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Recognized as one of the quintessential icons of the American West, the mule deer is the most valued big game animal in Utah. The trademark bounding pogo stick style gait of a mule deer is called stotting and gives them the ability to change direction on a dime. Some biologists estimate that a mule deer's sense of smell is up to 1,000 times stronger than a human's, and research suggests that a mule deer can detect human odor up to a half mile away. By the turn of the 19th century, mule deer became scarce because of unregulated hunting. As wildlife management took hold in the 1920s and 30s, mule deer numbers rebounded, and by the 50s and 60s, we had record numbers of mule deer in the West. But the abundance didn't last. The decline of quality habitat due to urbanization, fire depression, drought, and many other factors has seen mule deer numbers drop below their historic numbers. The Utah Division of Wildlife Resources is working on several mule deer related research projects all over the state. Some of the questions they hope to answer are, how and why are mule deer fawns dying? And what effects does the coyote have on fawn survival? For more information on those studies, log on to wildlife.utah.gov. Boy, what a beautiful day down here in southern Utah. 75 degrees, looks like we might have some storms on the horizon though. Let's check that recreation forecast for your next outdoor adventure by turning it over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on Charlie's Hunt. Hey, don't forget the Youth Waterfowl Fair coming to Farmington Bay on September 9th. A great chance to take the kids out, get an airboat ride, a mud boat ride, some instruction on how to blow a duck call from our buddy Brett Wanacott. It's a great time had by all. For all the information, check our Outdoors calendar page right there on our Outdoors website at ksltv.com. Gabe, you were saying, it's gotta be one of the first deer taken in Utah. It probably is, I mean legally. Legally? <laughs> Always a conservation officer, <laughs> legally. <laughs> hey, congratulations, that's uh, you know, like I said earlier, it's bigger than my first buck. <laughs> that's, he's a cool buck, yeah. he's special. Nice job. Nice job, kid. Hey, don't forget when you're out with your family, your friends, your kids, make sure you take a snapshot of their personal best, their first deer or whatever. Even It could be beautiful scenery like we've got here behind us. Submit it to our snapshot contest. You might win our big prize from Camp Chef. Now the best of the week. Let's see if you can beat Chuck's old buck here with the snapshot of the week. We kick it off with, no doubt, one of the first deer taken this year on the hunts. 14-year-old Ryan Orr shows off his first ever deer with a bow that he took just 30 minutes into the hunt. This great tall 3x4. Derek and his family were out on a hike checking trail cameras in anticipation of the hunt when they heard something moving through the trees. Turns out it was this cool buck playing peekaboo through the aspens. Derek says it was sure good to see a quality buck in his general area that he plans to hunt. Brady went to check on his trail cameras and found, well, not much left of it. This is what the fire looked like on Brady's camera down south, and this is what's left of his camera. Luckily, the memory card was still intact and Brady was able to salvage his pictures. Drew had a great time fishing Spirit Lake with his niece and nephew, helping them catch their first ever fish on a fly. They even spotted a couple of blue moose to round out their Hyuna trip. Brian also came across two bedded bull moose on a recent hike along the Wasatch Front. The alpine wildflowers were in full bloom, adding a splash of color to the green hillside. A very cool shot, Brian. But our winner tonight spent a week catching some interesting and big fish in southeastern Alaska. Brent and his wife Tanya were up at Pibus Point Lodge on Admiralty Island for their first Alaska fishing trip. They caught loads of fish and saw some pretty incredible sights, including this rare iceberg that was shaped like a whale. Brent says they marveled at nature and what it unexpectedly has to offer, and they took some cool pictures to boot. A cool trip to go with our cool prize, Brent, as you just won our snapshot of the week. Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Stryker Multi-Fuel Backpacking Stove that can be fueled by propane or butane. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks Quarterly Facebook giveaway 
for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. What deer comes in on the first night? We were expecting to be here two, three days. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Phone goes off and they still come in. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Her face was priceless. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. I look over and that deer's still just looking at us going, is that Miranda Lambert over there? <laughs> hey, that's Miranda Lambert. <laughs> That was classic. Well, a lot of fun. Thanks, guys, for doing yeah, this, Darren. Thank you. Always good seeing you. Yes, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good job, kid. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you, Gabe. I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun, Gabe. Maybe. A lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It's uh, these hunts need to happen. They do. And they can happen. There's a, a state set up to do it with landowners and and uh, mentoring, and there's tags that can happen. So yeah. we can do more of this. I agree. Good job. Well, hey, I'm Adam Meekle. Remind you to get with your family, your friends. You've got all fall. Get out and hunt. Make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.